again. So, um, as we were discussing the uh, topic of projectile motion, now we will solve some uh, examples and some problems. So, look at your book, page 43, you have this example. It says that we have a sack sliding off the ramp. So, a sack, something like a bag or whatever. Huh? So, a sack slides off the ramp shown in this figure with a horizontal velocity of 12 meters per second so here we have a horizontal velocity so and this is initial velocity so initial horizontal velocity so immediately we write down whatever we know so the node in the x direction is 12 meters per second now as you can see it has only one component this this sack is, is shooting in the x direction so we have only one velocity in the x direction. We don't have velocity in the y direction. It's shooting in this direction. So we also know that v node in the y direction now is zero meters per second. You always write down whatever you know from the question. If the height of the ramp is six meters, this height is six meters from the floor. The, uh, the question is asking us to determine the time required or time needed for the sack to strike the floor. This time needed to strike the floor, the flight, the flight time, this flight time, this t is required, t. And the range r, and remember guys, r, we said r, this range, you see it's on the x-axis, so it's basically x final, the position, uh, the final position in the x-direction minus the initial position in the x-direction. This is r, we are required to solve for r and t what do we know we know the height uh, the height we know the x velocity or the velocity the initial velocity in the x direction we also know a right we know the acceleration in the y direction is a 9.81 meters per second squared so what do we do and how do we solve it we go back and take a look at our five equations now let's just let's just look at the second equation here what does it say it says that x equals x node, the final position equals the initial pos position in the x direction plus the initial velocity in the x direction multiplied by t. Now, if you rearrange this one, hmm, you get x minus x node, which is r, right? We are required to solve for r, equals the initial velocity in the x direction multiplied by the time. Now, this we know? Yes, definitely we know this one. We know this value. It's 12 meters per second. The time is required and the range is required. Hence, we definitely eventually need to use this equation, but not yet, because we have two unknowns. So go here into the, the, the vertical uh, 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 conditions. So what do we have? The first one, it says that the final velocity in the y direction, we don't know that, right? We don't know that. And we, know, we don't know the time. We know v node in the y is zero, so still we cannot use this equation. What we need to find, look guys, we need to find either the time or the range. But we cannot get range from these equations because this range is defined in the x direction. So we need to find an equation that could help us find the time, the flight time. Let's go and check with the second one. Second one, y equals y node, the final position in the y direction. Do we know it? Yes, it's six. The initial the initial uh, position in the y direction, do we know it? It's zero. I mean, depending on where you're taking your reference. If you take your reference at point C, for example, then the initial height is zero. The final height is, uh, is, is six or vice versa. The initial height is zero and the final height is minus six, right? Because it's going in the negative uh, y direction. Anyways, it depends on where you take your reference point. Here, the, the book is taking the reference point at A, at exactly the, the, the first uh, second this uh, sack starts shooting off the ramp. So, do you know these two things? Yes, we do. Do you know the initial velocity in the y direction? Yes, it's zero. The time is required. Do we know g? Yes, g is 9.81. So now you could use this equation. Start with this equation. So now if we take, as I said, if we take our uh, coordinate system with the origin at point A, uh, now we have the initial, uh, we have the initial height here is zero. The initial height is zero the final height is minus six so apply these into this equation again we just write it again y equals 
y naught plus the initial velocity in the y direction multiplied by what we are looking for, which is the time, minus half g t squared. See guys, half is already the, the, the minus sign is already taken into consideration, so do not put g as minus 9.81 again. Okay, so y we have to look for the final final y so final y so we started here the final y is at point c right so we are going in the negative y direction so take y as minus six meters minus six equals the initial position at y in the y direction is zero plus hmm? v the initial velocity in the y direction is zero multiplied by time whatever it is zero minus half Multiplied by 9.81 meters per second squared multiplied by t squared sorry so we'll have probably two values for t we should take the positive one so now t would give us a value of 1.11 seconds done done so now we solved for the flight time, it's 1.11 seconds. You go back into the horizontal uh, equations, and plug this time here. The range is required, V0 in the x direction is known, so you, you could actually solve for uh, uh, the R directly. So now, say that R equals the initial velocity in the x direction multiplied by the flight time. So the initial velocity in the x direction was 12 meters per second. 12 meters per second multiplied by 1.11 seconds. And this should give us 13.3 meters. That's it. You see how simple these questions are? As I said, you have to be systematic, be careful with the calculations, and decide which equations are needed uh, to reach uh, to your final answer. That's it. We'll solve another problem later. Thank you.